great pleasure and honor to participate in this conference in honor of Vitaly and in particular Italian discussion. And our first speaker in this afternoon is Professor Elena Kwadinski from Jerusalem. And she will take us into escape into amazing life of science. Hello, dear friends. First of all, I want to say that I am very glad to be here today and to take part in this conference dedicated to the celebration on Vitalis' birthday. And uh, um, to present here our joint work on uh, biomedicine. And because of biomedicine, I want uh, to, uh, to, to tell uh, some words about the history of our collaboration. Uh, first time, we met 50 years ago, 50 years, in Russia, when I was uh, experimenting with tumor cells from, cancer, from blood cancer. And Vitaly, he was always very interested in anything mysterious in nature. And he was interested in our work too. And analyzing our results, he created the method for the calculation, the rate of tumor growth. And it was very important for us. And we used his formula for many years. But uh, soon after that, Vitaly made the Leah. And when we again, uh, when we met again, almost uh, 40 years after our first <laughs> communication, uh, his first question was, has there been anything interesting in your work since our last meeting. <laughs> First question, nothing else. I replied that I found intriguing cells in vitro response to stimuli of varying intensity. Weak and ultra weak stimuli sometimes <coughs> produce in cells a much stronger response than much more intensive stimuli. Vitaly was interested. He was impressed. And we began to work together. And Vitaly had to immerse himself in the amazing life of self. Some words about this amazing life. Many phenomena which are well known in biology and medicine have no explanation from the classical stance of biochemistry and molecular biology. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, here is the uh, community of blood cells who who was and will be uh, the subject of our investigation. And about blood cell production. In a man, 70 kilograms of weight per day, erythrocytes, 200 grams production. Leukocytes, 100 grams. Total 300 grams per month, nine, uh, nine kilograms per year, 100 kilograms per 70 years, seven tons. However, there is a constant number of blood cells in body within each time unit. How it works? It works according to the main law of kinetics. Equal number of cells is born and dies within each time unit. 
But what happens in the course of the cell's life after it is born and before it dies? <laughs> what cell do, do, does? Cells must be able to divide the program of proliferation, grow, secrete active substances. It means to be functionally active, the program of differentiation. And to die, to die without disturbing other cells. This is the program of apoptosis. What does it mean, apoptosis? It's a very important program for a cell. I think the apoptosis is a very important program for the cell. Is it good? Loud? Yes? <coughs> apoptosis, genetic program of suicidal cell death, the only program ready for activation at the time of cell birth. Apo means full doses, drop loss in Greek. John Kerr uh, presented it in 1972, and he adopted this word from Guy Pogrates, who gave this name of autumnal leaf fall. It is why I printed, painted this cells. Uh, model of apoptosis. Every cell at the birth is programmed to cell destruction, apoptosis. To leave means to block this suicidal program by signals from other cells surrounding this one. Social behavior, maybe. And <laughs> The same situation. This newborn baby will live only if he or she will obtain food, heat, and other types of care from surrounding people. An algorithm common for all nature, maybe. How do cells receive signals to activate their main living programs? And here is the diagram of signal transduction. To activate a cell program, it is necessary to activate the whole signal way. Extra, extracellular signal, signal molecules uh, is bound to special receptor protein of the cell and activation of the receptor. After that, further signal propagation and path selection are done automatically. Molecule inductor and its molecule targets. Molecule target, at last, will activate a special program, proliferation, differentiation, or apoptosis. And it is very important for a cell, if we can see it, from significant fraction of the human genetic, almost a half of them is devoted to signal transduction, signal molecules, receptors, and so on. From 10 to 100,000 receptors may be expressed at the cell surface. 4,000 protein molecules take part in signal transduction. Signal molecules have to cover great distance during their movement inside a cell. Molecule di diameter is about 10 nanometers, while cell diameter is about 10,000 nanometers. How do signal molecules find their target? And this is the mystery of signal transduction. In 
2013, the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine was awarded to these gentlemen for their work on this fire, the mechanism of transporting and introducing signal molecules into target cells. However, this work did not provide an answer to the above mentioned question. How do signal molecules find their targets? A different paradigm is required. And now this picture. Imagine that this gentleman wants to connect immediately with his friend around this crowd at the stadium. How do you establish, establish connection with a specific person? And now we know how to do it. Mobile telephone. And we know how it works. We dial our friend's number on our mobile phone. This number is, uh, this number is in fact, electromagnetic cord. That is a property of emitted radio wave of his phone. Our phone transmits his specific signal, a beam, while our friend's recipient's phone receives it in a matter of seconds. If we, human beings, eventually learn to do that, maybe molecules and cells of our bodies know that implicitly Hypothesis. Cell signal propagation largely happens through specific monochromatic radiation, which plays a leading role in search for molecule targets as well in directional motion and activation of signal molecules. And in the second half of the 20th century, photomultiplier tubes help to show that all living organisms emit electromagnetic energy and a very wide range of wavelengths, uh, wave, wavelengths and wave frequency. And this is a very interesting person. This is uh, Alexander Gurvich who was the first person who presented in the beginning of last century data about stimulating effects of cells radiation during their division and called it the mitogenic ray. In biology, mitosis means division. He took two samples of, mm, of onion roots uh, and uh, he, uh, and um, uh, if uh, he and if they are placed in such a position, you see it. Uh, the dividing rules of one onion uh, stimulate the division, the root cells in another sample. If they are separated by a quartz glass, you see it here, a quartz glass uh, plate, which is transparent for ultraviolet light with wavelengths of about 200 nanometers. This is Alexander Gurvich, and many, many years, nobody remembers. And at last, Professor Fritz Albert Pope from Germany created the theory of biophantone energy field in a cell. Bio, uh, the points of his theory. Biophantone are electromagnetic particles constantly emitted by all living organisms. The total intensity of emission fluctuates between several to several hundreds of photons per one square centimeter of surface. 
the sources of intracellular biofaton emission are DNA conformation and metabolic reactions. And every intracellular molecule has its own spectrum of biofaton emission and the same spectrum of bioresonance uptake. And he'll give here some examples of this. And now at last, the aim of to investigate the relation between the strength of inductor concentration and the rate of target cell response, the number of activated cells. It, it was our first model. We took uh, blood cells out of body and investigated them in vitro in so-called uh, uh, in so-called cell culture. I, uh, will, I will not overburst you with uh, detail of, uh, of uh, biology experiments, only the main uh, results. In this experiment, we took precursors of leukocytes and uh, influenced their proliferation by the inductor of proliferation, their specific growth factor. At here, 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 at this line, uh, you see the diminishing concentration of inductor of proliferation. And here, at vertical, uh, you see a number of activated cells. And to our great uh, surprise, we, uh, it was absolutely unexpected, we saw a peak of uh, stimu stimulating cells, a peak of activated cells at a very low concentration of the entire. At first, I could not believe it. And I repeated this experiment several times, and the results was very close to it. Uh, sorry, this experiment uh, I showed Vitalia as the answer to his first question. And he was very much impressed. And this is our joint experiment. <laughs> Uh, in this experiment, we took another blood cell. We took precursors of erythrocytes as uh, inductor of proliferation was their specific growth factor. And uh, you see here the, the diminishing concentration of the inductor of proliferation. And here is the scale of this. Uh, concentration, and here is the number of activated cells. And it, it was unexpected increase. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. It was an, an uh, unexpected increase in cell proliferation at a very, very, you see, low concentration. Uh, following uh, experiment, absolutely different. We took uh, tumor cells uh, from mice. It was mice melanoma cells and uh, induced them to death. We used inductor of cell death, inductor of apoptosis. You see again the diminishing number of the inductor, and here the number of, uh, of activated cells, of apoptotic cells. And you can see in uh, absolutely different series of experiments the same result. Uh, very, very low concentration and increase of apoptosis. 
main conclusion, there was no strong, strong correlation in the long range between the concentration of the inductor and the number of cells receptive to the inductor. But following a significant decrease in the number of molecule inductor decrease in concentration, the number of targeted cells receptive to the inductor has, in our cases, increased our conception. Interaction between inductor and target molecules in cells is, bait, uh, is bait, based on laws of physics. An inductor molecule emits a specific, specific radiation which is captured by the appropriate target molecule. We, can, uh, we call this process the bioresonance absorption principle. This is a chain process that creates a signal path along which the activated molecules move and interact with each other uh, as described in molecular biology. Remember, uh, this gentleman who received uh, the uh, described this molecular uh, communication. All impact is mediated through electromagnetic radiation by photons according to laws of constructive and destructive interference. Due to this effect, weak signals are sometimes able to produce stronger response than strong ones, as the increase in their number may lead to expansion of the area of destructive, destructive interference. And now the picture of such interference. The feasibility of our hypothesis was confirmed calculation of the effective radius of the emission by GCSF molecules based on their interference. Several examples from biology and medicine. Male Saturn butterflies can find a female at a distance of up to 11 kilometers. Salmon fish determines the direction of movements to the spawn by smell at a distance of 100 kilometers from the place of their birth. And much important for me, it is well known that those response effect of drugs does not always follow a linear relationship in the therapeutic dose range. For instance, small doses of caffeine and adrenaline cause a stimulating effect, while large doses have a depressive effect. The same pattern is observed in many other drugs. And suggestion for future work, our suggestion, to develop an experimental and mathematic models for further study of the role played by above photon emission in the creation and implementation of the main cell programs. The clarify the mechanism of molecules' directional motions among the signal transduction path in a cell. To research the role of biophoton energy field in the regulation of cell balance in both normal to develop methods to early direction of neoplasticity based on the parameters of the TC biophoton energy field. To develop a test system for evaluation 
of an individual efficiency of targeted therapy drugs aimed at the separation of individual signal cascade molecules in tumor. It is, the, the last is very important in medicine now because now it is developed the targeted therapy in cancer. And now the window is open to new fields As a retired member of the Technion, I can't resist recalling the Nobel Prize winning work of Chekhanova and the other gentleman's name escapes me at the moment about degradation of proteins and so on. I wonder if there's any connection whatsoever in the degradation of cells that you're studying.
as the onion experiment being repeated in a non-Stalinist environment. <laughs> no, no, but if all the repeated experience, I think people who do physics, chemistry, mathematics, yes, have big mistake in understanding meaning of repeating experience. Yes? Assume we may not trust the person who created things. We may not trust, just lie. But take this, this out. Assume you absolutely trust the medical. And he said he sees something and you cannot repeat it. Yes? For example, when you put our leg and foot in the jump, it repeats the experience. Yes? But is it an interesting experiment about our conscience, about our life? It's reflective. It's not interesting. So perhaps not repeated experiment. We should somehow to understand how to, to absorb this because it's probably reflect real life, conscience type life. Of, of, of self. We don't know. I don't want to speculate. We should we'll kill me for any cause of sin because it's continued to happen. But let's repeat it anyway. No, but you see, I mean, many imaginary experiments to tell you who are not, cannot be repeated because it is same. Uh, I like to say that if you take a mosaic, so uh, a drop right. of uh, uh, orange in Tel Aviv Street and threw it away and look how quickly it will disappear. So, you understand what's happening. You do the same winter in Moscow and it disappears in Munich. So if it's not repeated experiment, how do you judge it? So we don't know parameter. Judge. It is a known parameter when we may repeat that. And this is more or less the same. When we study only thoroughly repeated experiment. Yeah, but I'm going to give a famous example, right? For thoroughly repeated experiment, yeah? But what? It's a classical, I think it's a good classical example to so confirm your point of view. You take a lead, yeah? Put it into some way on the side, and in some moment you have this worm going there. Worm come from me. And if it's hydrogen type, you know, worm come from me. And it's truly proved that this way it would expand. Right? <laughs> so then out, out of rotten meat, worm comes. Right? Who's this? Check the zero. Yeah. Ah, this is this also received as now the science. Science Prize in Russia, the only person can receive the Science Prize yeah, yeah. for this experiment. And this totally repeated experiment, he repeats hundreds of times and they come. Yes. Sometimes you have to <laughs> need some little conditions yeah. so that it flies around, but it's by the point. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yes, we don't know. No, we don't know. No, we know. So the trouble is, experiments mm -hmm. not for us to judge the condition. Right? It's yes. very subtle thing how you make experiments. Because a lot of things may go wrong, you have to know that not for you, not for me to judge. Yes. We no, cannot, no, we cannot I, judge them. I mean, I, I very 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 Sometimes you may, you may, you may, you may yeah, not the judge. In one small statement, I think I may explain in that it is obvious in some sense, easy to explain, that if you have too much molecular which should influence some process, it may stop. And this is what is interesting. And this is explainable. This is uh, not uh, fiction. What, 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 what you said exactly is probably even what we are talking The more they put the drug, but no, no, it is. Again, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know. There are lots of experiments. You know, doctors who are my back, better have back for both points of effect on patients. You know that? It's, 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 it's proven fact. Misha, I don't say about homeopathy. We talk about increasing 10, 10 times, 100 times, uh, something like that. More. Homeopathy is decreasing 10 to power, yeah. 12, 10 to power, 15. It is something else. It is something else. <laughs> and with this amount, it may be explained, and it's actually explained. Okay, what well, is it? What you take one drink of alcohol, you are happy. And drink lots of water, see. So, so you need to okay. give my explanation. Uh, may I say about the homeopathic a little, homeopathy? I believe in homeopathy, and you saw um, our first experiment with homeopathic concentration, and I've done it because I told my friend, homeopathic doctor, uh, if you are right, please give me this concentration, and I try 
to influence cells. They have no psychology. And I, I believed that it will be nothing. And what was my surprise? <laughs> when we saw this picture. So, and after that, I uh, read a lot of literature experiment with homeopathic concentration. It works. I do not agree with modern attitude to homeopathy. They are reproducive. They are reproducive in literature. Yes, so yes. There is a coffee break. It will only begin, so maybe I think it's ready. Uh, but um, so Shlomit has the two lists of who goes on which bus tomorrow. So make sure you are on a list and maybe remember which of the two. Okay. So this is outside. And uh, as for the concert, we will all be leaving uh, more or less together after the next session. So don't worry about it if anybody is. is worried. 